Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker is upon us, and I have to say, I'm really, really excited to see this film. But after looking around and reading some social media threads and some blogs online, I've discovered that there's a sect of Star Wars fans out there that since The Last Jedi really couldn't care less about Star Wars. And that really got me thinking, why all the hate for Star Wars? And that is exactly what we're going to be talking about today. Right here, right now, coming at you. Hello to all my Star Wars fans and Star Wars haters alike. Dante D here, and welcome to the channel where we talk about comic books and other geek stuff. So, Star Wars hate. It's kind of been around for a few years now, probably since the release of The Last Jedi. And today I really kind of wanted to take a look at some of the reasons why longtime fans of Star Wars are suddenly turning this their back on this franchise that they have loved for years. Today I'm going to be kind of taking a look at some of the reasons that I feel through reading a lot of blog threads and social media posts and YouTube videos uh, that fans are turning away from Star Wars and then I'm going to share with you my personal issues that I have with Disney Star Wars. So I feel that longtime fans of Star Wars were first ticked off with this franchise that they have loved for a really, really long time back when Disney first acquired Star Wars from George Lucas. And that is because as soon as Disney acquired this property, they completely erased years and years of canon. Canon from video games and comics and dozens and dozens of books that were beloved by fans of Star Wars. Now Disney erased that canon just because they didn't want to be bogged down and held back by things that happened in the Star Wars universe that they did not create. So they pretty much just stuck a Star Wars Legends label on all of these books and comics that were released before Disney acquired the Star Wars franchise. Now for me, this wasn't a huge deal just because I wasn't that invested in uh, the Star Wars books. As a matter of fact, I'm just getting into Star Wars books now, which are really, really awesome. And I plan to do a future video on once I've read um, a good handful of them, but they're really, really awesome. I do highly recommend Star Wars books, but that's besides the point. But like I said, this wasn't a huge deal to me, not only because I wasn't invested in the books and the comics back then, but I'm a huge Marvel and DC comic book fan and changes in canon, huge changes in comic books happen so often that you kind of get used to it. Personally, however, I don't feel that something has to be canon in order for me to appreciate it. If it's a good story and it really piques my interest, then I will be engaged and I will love it no matter if it is canon or not. The next thing that I feel is really ticking fans off about Star Wars is their overt attention to diversity and their inclusion of identity politics in a lot of Star Wars media. And this is not only happening in Star Wars. If you've been watching the channel for a while, you'll know that we did a video about social justice warrior type comics and identity politics in comics. And I think fans of Star Wars are likely also fans of Marvel and DC and other forms of geek media. And everywhere they're looking, they're starting to see these elements of diversity and identity politics in these types of media. And it's really in their face and they're really not liking it and are not receptive to it. And it's not because they're racist, okay? I really just think it's because they're looking at these types of media as an escape, something that they can use to forget real world problems and just have a few minutes or an hour or, or, or two to forget about the real world. And now they're going to these particular types of media that they have loved for so, so long and they're seeing real world problems included in this media. Fans are getting angry nowadays because Star Wars and Marvel and all these other companies that are including this diversity agenda in their material are basically saying to these fans, like, this is not for you anymore. We don't care about you. We are now going to focus on another generation of people that we can bring in to this, this media. However, this isn't always the case. Kids have so many different distractions nowadays 
And I mean, Star Wars is popular among kids, but there are so many other competing franchises nowadays that are diverting kids' attention away from classic franchises like Marvel and Star Wars. I really don't think it's a great business decision to piss off longtime fans of your intellectual property who have been supporting your franchise and your company with their dollars for years and years and investing everything in a new generation that might not necessarily be as receptive to your product. That's not to say that you can't include something for new generations in this media. I just feel that there, there's a little bit of a balance that needs to be followed with respect to releasing this type of content for a franchise that is as old as Star Wars. Diversity has always been at the heart of companies like Marvel and Star Wars. Marvel, for example, always did their best back in the 60s and 70s to include characters from diverse backgrounds. And Star Wars also did this in their films when they gave us strong leads, female leads like Princess Leia, or they depicted women in a position of power with Mon Mothma. We even had the character of Lando Calrissian who showed us that sci-fi and geek culture is not just something solely for white people. I'm just gonna forget though that this whole thing with Princess Leia ever happened. The next thing I feel that really has fans in a tizzy is the portrayal of Star Wars legacy characters in these new films. Fans feel that absolutely no respect whatsoever is being paid to these characters that have a more than 40 year long history. And I actually would have to agree with that point. I mean, they killed off Han Solo. I can kind of get what they were doing with that. They wanted to make room for this new generation of characters. Harrison Ford himself wasn't even really upset that they killed off Han Solo. And don't even get me started on Luke Skywalker. I absolutely hated the portrayal of Luke Skywalker in The Last Jedi as this like hermit who is cutting himself off from all of society and whining and brooding on this planet about all of his failures in life. Not to mention he's really strange and awkward and drinking green milk coming from alien boobs that really kind of makes people watching uncomfortable and not to mention he looks like he's two steps away from being Alan Moore's cousin. And another thing that I feel is really upsetting Star Wars fans is the fact that all of these new characters and all of these plots and storylines were set up in The Force Awakens and then we get to The Last Jedi and pretty much nothing was addressed. I mean around the time The Force Awakens came out there were so many fan theories about who Rey's parents were or who Snoke really was. And this is good, you, you want there to start being fan theories about your content because that really starts creating a lot of hype about your product. But Ryan Johnson comes along and he pretty much scrapped everything that J.J. Abrams did. And I don't really know if that was the best decision. Not to mention, I feel that they were setting Finn up to maybe be force sensitive and maybe have a future as a Jedi. And I would've, really would have liked to have seen that. I really like Finn's character. I think the Finn character is really cool. And then Finn in The Last Jedi ends up being an absolutely useless character. And it feels to me like they made these beloved characters like Luke Skywalker and Finn purposely look ridiculous or non-essential just to make female leads like Rey shine. And again, I personally don't have anything against strong female leads or characters from diverse backgrounds, but I feel that Marvel and Star Wars in the past did well with their attention to diversity because it was subtle. It was in spite of everything as opposed to being the center and main focus of the film or the book or whatever the content is. Now I just kind of want to touch upon briefly my personal issues that I'm having with the new Star Wars films. I personally want to start off by saying I do not hate Disney Star Wars. I like George Lucas Star Wars better, but I do not hate Disney Star Wars. There are a few Star Wars films that Disney has put out that I actually really, really liked. I actually loved Solo. I thought Solo was a great film and I, I, I thought it was really, really well done. I didn't like The Force Awakens. I actually did like The Last Jedi as a film. If you can ignore the fact that it's a Star Wars film and maybe just look at it as a space drama, I think you could probably appreciate it and like it a little bit better. I don't think it fits in well 
in the new trilogy. I don't care what The Rise of Skywalker is going to be like. I do not think that film is going to fit in really well with this new trilogy. But as a film, there are things I can definitely appreciate about it. But that doesn't mean that I don't have issues with it. Like I said, I've just spent the last few minutes ranting and raving about things that fans do not like about The Last Jedi and the new Star Wars. And I can definitely see what they are saying, but that did not take away from my experience one while I was watching The Last Jedi. And also, I actually did enjoy Rogue One. Now, you'll probably notice that the only Disney Star Wars film that I listed that I did not like was The Force Awakens. And the issue that I had with The Force Awakens was that it borrowed way too many plot elements from A New Hope. This is well known. This is a huge criticism that it does get all the time, but I do agree with it. It, it followed that same formula as A New Hope, and it just made me start looking at Star Wars as a formulaic franchise. I actually did want to see something new that also could pay respect to the old, the older films, but I did not get that with The Force Awakens at all. The Last Jedi did not pay respect by any means to any of the legacy characters, so it kind of ticked me off uh, in that regard. However, it did provide something new, and I can appreciate The Last Jedi for tr trying and daring to be different. The next thing that I do not like about Disney Star Wars is their lack of a sophisticated villain. When you think Disney Star Wars, you automatically, your mind goes to Kylo Ren. I absolutely hate Kylo Ren. I find he acts like a toddler. He has these, these, these outbursts, and I get what they're going for they're going towards this you know he's so entrenched in the dark side but he was he was so whiny they could have thought of a, a much much more methodical um sophisticated villain rather than this person who acts like a hormonal teenager that can't get their emotions in check and yeah i get it the dark side is no control over your emotions but all the other sith lords that i have seen on screen were more methodical and more machiavellian than this idiot. Think of all the most beloved villains in geekdom. You have Darth Vader, Thanos, Tywin Lannister. They not only have the fact that they are sophisticated and methodical in common, but they also challenge your own values and make you sometimes rethink your own moral compass. That is what I feel makes a good villain, and I definitely do not think that Kylo Ren fulfills any of that criteria. The next thing that bothers me about Disney Star Wars is the disproportionate portrayal of force powers. I wanted to use the word unrealistic, but at the end of the day, heck, they're force powers. They don't exist, and all force powers and all portrayals of force powers are unrealistic, so I'm gonna go with the word disproportionate. But what exactly do I mean by that? Well, if you see the way Rey uses her force powers on screen, you would think Holy crap, she is the most gifted Jedi of all time, and she's even more powerful than Master Yoda. Well, I think personally that that is total bullshit. This is not what a person who is learning the ways of the Force is able to do. This is not what a person who's picking up a lightsaber for the first time is able to do. This is what a person who picks up a lightsaber for the first time does. This is what a person who is using the Force and learning to use the Force does. To rationalize Rey's powers by saying that she is so gifted in the Force, I feel is total bullcrap. And I feel that in the next movie, The Rise of Skywalker, they're just going to take the ridiculousness even farther so to not negate what The Last Jedi and The Force Awakens did. Now, was this an error on the part of Disney? I don't really know. Did they mean to make Rey this powerful? That I can't really confirm, but my guess is that they actually went out of their way to make her look like she's powerful and she's the best. I also feel that the new Star Wars films lack a lot of quirks that the George Lucas Star Wars films had. It's really kind of hard to kind of pinpoint what was so quirky about the original Star Wars films or even the Indiana Jones films. But if you've seen a lot of George Lucas's films, you know that there are these quirks that are really characteristic of George Lucas's films. And I don't feel that those are in the new Star Wars films. Now, I think a director should be free to direct in his own personal style. But if you're 
trying to pay respect and pay homage to the original films, I think there's a certain amount of replication of Lucas's quirky and fun style that you have to incorporate into your own style in order to make the film pleasing to both new fans and longtime fans. <laughs> and the last thing that I feel that the new Star Wars films really fail to do is to provide great escapism. Star Wars nowadays is not escapism anymore to me. They are starting to incorporate a lot of real war world issues into their content. And again, it's fine. It doesn't ruin my viewing experience, but the experience does feel a little different for me with these new films rather than uh, with the original films. And I don't feel that when I'm watching these new Star Wars films that I have nostalgia goggles on. Yes, I did grow up with Star Wars. Yes, I was a huge Star Wars fan when I was a kid. Yes, I am still a huge Star Wars fan. However, I do keep an open mind with these new Star Wars films and I do try to appreciate them the best I can. And like I said, I do enjoy a lot of what Disney's putting out there, but if you're going to be Star Wars, and you want to keep up with the tradition of Star Wars, there are a couple things I feel that they are lacking. So that about does it for a video today. I really hope that you enjoyed it. I would love to hear from you. Please let me know what your opinions are uh, with respect to the new Star Wars films, and let me know if you are excited to see the new Rise of Skywalker film that is coming out rather soon. Please let me know in the comments. Until next time, this is Dante D signing off. I will see you all in the next episode.